Well, thank you very much. I probably traveled the longest to get here today. So if I suddenly pass out halfway through the talk, then uh, you'll know why. Uh, this, is, this is actually a title which uh, uh, probably says uh, a lot more about, about what our aspirations are rather than what our, our achievements are. Uh, but I come from a field in prostate cancer which is obsessed by hormones, not just because of males working in the field, but because our, we have a very, very if temporary treatment for the cancer. And uh, this has led people to, to hypothesize that prostate cancer over here derives from the luminal cells in prostate. And there's still a very large majority of people in the field who believe that this is the case. Uh, but for many years now, we have focused our attention down here in the basal compartment, as I would call it, uh, with the idea that the cancer is actually driven from below. From these, the, and, uh, from these undifferentiated cells. Now, that's not a surprise to people in other fields, but in prostate cancer, this is almost like a paradigm shift in people's thinking. Um, we, of course, have to take into account the fact that our potential tumor-initiating cell down here arises from a more differentiated basal cell, but uh, we feel that it comes as a direct change from the tissue stem cells here. And then... Cancer itself is, is, is differentiation, but in an aberrant state. And the final lesion, this thing is incredibly sensitive, uh, the final lesion is achieved by Darwin. Uh, and the things that are successful in prostate cancer are those that can adapt successfully to the environment within the prostate or within the treatment regime you're giving a prostate cancer patient, as we'll see. Now, our approach was to go straight to primary tissues and to take the heterogeneous mixture that we've heard about and find various ways of fractionating it. And we came down in the end to using these three markers as a combination. And this also, I think, is a weakness in the field of prostate cancer and other cancers in that somebody picks their favorite antigen and decides they're going to purify stem cells from cancers that way. It's actually the combination which gives the purity you require to do the studies. So, we initially expanded this uh, through a one, one passage in culture and then reselected to verify um, what we believe was the stem cell fraction and not their daughter cells, but one cell removed from that. And you'll see the reasoning behind that again as, as we go on. Uh, when we did our, our first microarray, uh, we got absolutely nothing. And I was just told by the postdoc I'd wasted 50, 60,000 pounds on this. And the answer was that the postdoc didn't know about Gleason grading. And prostate cancer severity is determined, was determined back in the 1960s by a wonderful bit of observational science by Don Gleason. And uh, when we started to grade our cancers according to Gleason grading, suddenly we got populations that fell out on a microanalysis of being benign separating from uh, malignant from benign. And then within those, as you can see from the tiling here, stem and basal cells. And the p-values in this, when we first saw them, were quite astonishingly high. And what we got out of this was the idea that there are two types of cells, two types of markers. There are malignancy markers and there are differentiation markers. And in prostate cancer, people tend to confuse the two because you have a change in cell type frequency. In a prostate cancer, the luminal cells when they're, when they're not being treated by hormones, um, are about 99% of the mass. Whereas in a normal prostate, they're about 60% of the mass. So you'll see basal markers appearing, which completely disappear in the cancer. Though there are people who say, this is a prostate cancer marker. In fact, it's a very powerful differentiation marker. That's not a bad thing. But when you come trying to decide what are the important genes for both oncogenesis and for treatment, then you're perhaps being misled by this. Now, the gold standard.